check this out and show you guys kind of what they figured out for the fix of the Ecobee problem. They're using these Ecobee basic power stealer modules here. I didn't install this one or the wiring would be cleaner. <laughs> but it's got uh, four wires of the thermostat wire hooked up, no common. And then it's got the five wires coming out using common. And uh, I'll take this apart for you on the test bench at home show you how it works but that's Ecobee's fix I guess to keep to filter out that noise finally gonna do a little follow-up on the Ecobee 4 thermostat issue with the Taiko uh, zone sensory valve actuator that introduces noise on the 24 volt system which causes the Ecobee 4 to go haywire now unfortunately I do not have the actual Ecobee thermostat today, and I don't feel like spending the over $200 cost just to get one. Um, so I don't have one with me right now, but I do have a part from the Ecobee, which they say is the fix. And that is this power stealer, um, power add a wire type thing that they call a power extender. And as you see, it's for if you put it in place, if you don't have enough wires for common, you'll see that there's five wires going to your air handler, fan coil, whatever, but only four wires going to the thermostat connections. So there's no common there. There's a common over here, which is a blue wire. So this is made for powering the thermostat when you don't have a common wire. And the thermostat requires a common wire. But they're saying that this will filter out the noise, which I'll show you guys on screen. I took one of these apart, and indeed it will. So first of all, I just have a regular thermostat hooked up just to turn it on. And I'm just gonna use the green output for fan just so I can switch it without a delay to bring on both the fan relay and uh, to start the uh, call for compressor, the yellow wire, which is gonna go to the 24 volts of the takeo valve. Once the takeo valve finishes its charge up time, it'll open, close the end switch, and then yellow will continue over to the air handler, which is, these represent the air handler and then the contactor will pull in. So I'm just gonna flip on my power here. Honey, well, should boot up. There it goes. Got a nice sine wave there. See the sine wave doesn't have any distortion on it or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the menu, fan from auto to on, hit done. The LED should start flashing on the takeo valve while it's charging up the capacitor with pulses. And as you can see on the 24 volt sine wave there, those pulses are putting wicked nasty spikes on the 24 volt sine wave, which the Ecobee gets pissed off about. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. And just for a fresher, I'm gonna put my little filter in line that I came up with, which is if you didn't have another filter, this would work. I'm just pre, just rectifying the 24 volts AC to, uh, it'll be, you know, in the ballpark of 24 volts DC, which this doesn't care, it gets rectified inside. So it's just two, two diodes in series now, the one in here and the one external. But because I'm, I rectified it externally, as I showed in the last video, it, and I have a capacitor soldered on there, it is going to filter out most of those spikes. So now let's turn on the fan. blinking and now instead of those big nasty spikes you just have a little ripple riding along there on the 24 volts and then uh, you get that until this unit charges up and then now that opened oh and I don't have this closed so I couldn't bring this on but that's the way it works put these in here Blink. It shouldn't take much to charge. There it goes. Those open. There goes the contactor. And that's how it works. And um, go fan auto. Poof. And there it is closes. This is closing off the power of those six farad supercapacitors inside. Those two six farad 2.5 volt capacitors. I'm sure they're in series, probably making a five volt power supply. And I believe that motor ran on about five volts. So the motor's probably still being driven and then it will be drained after a few minutes. So I noticed with the Taco valves, 
you know, if you if it's not very long since you had it on, it doesn't take too long for this to blink and be fully charged and open the valve. There it goes. You have to wait several minutes for those supercapacitors to discharge, which, with your normal minimal five minute off time, those will be fully discharged. So, therefore, you usually get the full thirty second charging period of the capacitors. Now, I'm going to disconnect this, and we're going to install this in series with the thermostat, removing the common wire. I don't even know if this is going to work on this thermostat right. I have not tried this yet, so... Now, here's where your mind is going to be blown. Right here. If you don't have enough wires for common, here's how they tell you to wire it. And I figured this out. I woke up the other night, literally, like, partially dreaming realized what they were doing with this because when you wire in the power extender this is how they tell you to wire it at the thermostat you take the wire that would be on green which is still marked g it's your green wire because remember you don't have a common wire so you're taking the green wire off of where it would go to green and you're putting it over to what common <laughs> then the wires that would be on green and y1 for example are being taken off of that move down onto PEK. I don't have the thermostat to show you, but this is the sub base and that's where the wires go. So what are they doing? Well, I realized what they're doing. This green terminal here is not actually the fan terminal. They're taking you, having you connect the green wire to that on both ends, but that's actually just the common terminal. They're, you're stealing the green wire to use it for common. So the green wire on this installation is really the common wire. You don't have a, a green wire. It's gone. So that's why I kept blue in there because I already have it tied to the common terminal in this. Going from the green terminal It's because that is really common. So what they're doing is they're now taking the yellow wire and they're splitting it like those add-a-wire kits. They put it down here. They just call it PEK which I don't know what it stands for. Maybe it says somewhere, but I've realized what it is. They're uh, taking this, and when it's a, and it's a DC output. You get one polarity when uh, you, you, you're calling for, for the Y wire, and you get another polarity when it's calling for the green wire. And I'll show you how that works. I have, here's diodes. I just wrapped two of them together. I'm going to shove them into that Y terminal, which goes to PEK at the thermostat. I'm going to take this off a close-up here. Now we got that on there so we only have the one remember we don't have a yellow wire because we because we only have you know limited wire so we're using the the yellow wire which i've connected on green this just pretend this is yellow and when it goes on one polarity i have the fan on it's outputting the green wire only see this led is not blinking it energized this relay so it's going uh that polarity through the diode so it should be getting a DC output and actually let's do I didn't even think of looking at that as DC there you go DC you're only getting the positive half let's look at the original sine wave there it is you go through a diode you, you chop it you got half so what if we go through the other half well it's gonna give you the other half you're chopping it and just getting the negative halves now I did put this back so what they're doing is when you get the positive half positive half is um, biasing on the one triac in here which is taking red right back out to green and powering this relay if you power the other one then it's doing through the other triac the negative one it's, it's biasing that one which is now energizing yellow which is why that's blinking and of course Let's show you what happens when you do both. So we're going to go fan only, positive half. What happens when you go to the other diode? Well, with a little bit of clipping and all, you just give both halves, it restores the full sine wave. Here's the other thing. Look at this. That is not filtering out those nasty spikes. Original. And they're going to the thermostat. It's still full of all those nasty spikes while that is charging. How about that? The only thing I could think of is when this Ecobee is placed into this mode, it must uh, change something inside in its perimeters to where it's not sensitive or something. <laughs> it doesn't re seem to be reacting to all that noise. 
I thought the other day I heard a click every now and then, but I wasn't for sure. But it definitely, when we put that in there, it definitely seemed to be running properly, and I didn't hear the, the fan relay clicking. If we don't have this in there and we run it, you know, with the common and everything, the five wire, uh, get the clicks whenever this is introduced into the system. So it's really crazy. Now, when I took up one of these apart well, at the job site the other day, I looked on here, I saw the capacitors and everything. I thought for sure that perhaps this was filtering and sending DC power over to the Ecobee, but it's not. As we saw, it doesn't clean up the 24 volts at all. I believe it passes red and common directly in here and right out to the other terminals. And I'm sure if we follow the wires, you know, we will probably see that. There's common going right over to common. Just passes right through. And then the other thing it does is this, they've got diodes, it looks like, and it's so it's taking 24 volts, rectifying it to DC. That's why you got 50 volt capacitors in there. And then you have uh, two optical isolators, one on each end. So that's what they're doing to steer it. That's your second diode in series, these optical isolators right here. So you, you, uh, they just have them flipped. So you basically got your uh, 24 volts between common and the positive hump goes over and uh, goes to the fan one, which is uh, probably the one over here. It's just gonna uh, go to a, you know, a current limiting resistor because you can only want to put like 40, 50 milliamps the most into these things, maybe even less. And you just, you're just basically turning on an LED inside the chip. It's isolated, so basically it's an LED on one side and a photo transistor on the other, or what do you want to call it, you know. Basically, uh, it when it light touches the transistor, it, the photo transistor, it, it, it biases it. So because it's doing it with light, there's no electrical coupling between an input and an output. It's totally isolated. You could short the output and it would never fry the input. You could put a bunch of voltage into the output or whatever, it'll never fry the input, and vice versa. You could put a bunch of voltage in the input and it'll never uh, fry the output because they're isolated. So this goes like that, and then that's what they're doing. They're uh, they have these two and opposite polarities. So polarities. So uh, with the diodes in series, you know, positive half of that 24 volt sine wave only biases one of these, and and then when you give the negative bias to the other one, then it turns on the other optical isolator, and you can do both at once, of course, you know, to get both outputs. So that's how they're doing it. Instead of relays, they're using optical isolators and triacs, which is what these are right here. There we go. We got these MOC 3063s charging you those optical isolators. And then you got the ST4108. Uh, so whatever, I looked them up, though they were, they were uh, triacs. And these optical isolators are triac outputs, just like those other ones I bought. Usually they're white, but sometimes they're black like that. So that's what those are. So I figured it out. I kind of woke up like last week, one morning, early in the morning, and went, "Oh, that's what these are. These are, these are, these are using. These are like ADA wires. That's what they're doing." <laughs> so green is really not green, not fan. It's straight up just common to common. They just have you move it over there and leave it as, you know, the green wire because they assume you have a green wire but you don't have a, com a wire for common. So that's just why they labeled it green on each end. Tell you to put on common over there at the thermostat. Very interesting. I have to say this is a pretty good, you know, circuit. I kind of think it's cool that Ecobee did that. Why Ecobee just totally spazzes and can't be filtered properly inside its thermostat to not need this thing, I don't know. But as I already showed you, it still has the noise. Uh between, you know, common and red when the echo is activated. So there it is. And there's the power. Nope. It's, uh, there it is. That's the power going into the thermostat. It's still loaded with spikes. So, huh. As far as filtration goes, my device filters out the spikes to, you know, very well. The power extender box which is what this is, power extender kit, does not filter jack shite. All it does is, uh, <laughs> it's made for, if you don't have enough wires for a common, and for some reason, when the Ecobee is placed in the mode to run this wiring instead of the standard wiring, it's not reacting to those spikes. 
or at least it hasn't been evident. So we will see. Oh yeah, there is one other piece of good news is that they still have all these boxes. This came from the job actually, I borrowed one. And this power extender box actually comes with every thermostat. A lot of people will never need that. It's just kind of interesting that you gotta pay for that no matter what, but it's in each one of these. That is a magnet right there, so it'll stick to the inside of your furnace or air handler. It's pretty neat. But that's it. It actually is in the bottom of this kit. Also, it's in this kit because the Ecobee Force it, it has a remote sensor, which you can either mount to a wall or you can mount on this little pedestal thing. Yeah. I don't think this particular place needs those. This is going to add to confusion. But I seen that they did enable one of those in one of the apartments and basically set it up to read the temperature here instead of uh, in the thermostat itself and so this person in the apartment if they have like a, a bigger apartment and it's not a studio they could take this into the bedroom at night or whatever and it'll basically that the ac will cycle based on the temperature where you wherever you put this and then if you're out in the living room throughout the day or by a window which they did have a lot of glass windows they said you know hey go put this over there and it will kind of cycle based on your temperature over there because you're on the couch or something so i guess it's a feature that could have some use. I also think it's just in the future, you know, might be a little bit of a headache. Those do, uh, it's like pairing Bluetooth devices. They'll lose their connections. You got to set them back up, stuff like that. So anyway, so there you have it. It's kind of what they figured out. Going to use the power extenders to fix their issues with the takeo valve actuators. Doesn't clean up the noise. I thought it was, but now I just confirmed that it does not. But... For some reason, the Ecobee being in that mode seems to be not reacting like it was. So, time will tell. So, possibly we might have an update on this over the next couple of weeks.